<coughs> Hurry up. Stop. So disgusting. What's up, everyone? So, this is our first podcast. Um, and in the past, we kind of operated in our own silos, both making videos on TikTok. But we felt as though it was important for us to come together um, and honestly just have conversations that we that we would have without the camera. This was mostly inspired by comments on TikTok saying, start a podcast, we want to hear more about the, you know, one minute videos. So here we are, first podcast called Seeds of Ilm. Ilm for reference means knowledge. So seeds of knowledge, um, knowledge is something that you have to grow, you have to foster, you have to feed. Mm -hmm. And the more you know, the more you understand, the more you understand, the more you can love. Yeah. And our primary goal here right now is to teach people about Islam, um, learn the ways and incorporate it into our daily lives because it honestly brings us peace and we know 100% it will bring peace to everyone implementing as much as they can about Islam. For sure. And honestly, we even started our own TikToks because we found there wasn't enough balance. You go on TikTok and you see dancing, singing, and things that aren't really productive. Um, but something that um, always stresses to me is that you have to be surrounded by people on the same wavelength, especially when it comes to religion or Islam. Um, you, just, you need to be connected to it because otherwise it's going to it's going to die. It's for, if you're not growing, then you're regressing. Ex oh, exactly. Right? And one other thing is, you and I both know there's so many friends and even family like we've had that if they're not necessarily bringing us closer to our deen, they're really not our day to day. Yeah, we sure. it's just difficult for us to. You're the average of the five people you hang out with, right? Oh yeah. So whatever they're doing, the majority, you're going to end up doing it as well. Whatever they're thinking, you're going to do it as well. Mm -hmm. You've heard of that, right? Oh, yeah. Whether you're thinking of it or not. Subconsciously, consciously, oh, whatever it is. So finding good friends, I can't say it's the most easiest thing, but Allah, Allah gives it when, you know. Yeah. But, so yeah. We're also, so we're also hoping that you take us as an example. Um, I hope you resonate with our content, with our conversation. Um, and aspire to try to find like-minded people, humbly speaking. Um, so this podcast, we really want to focus on you. <laughs> yeah. On me. So there's this one. I definitely it's long time coming, yeah. but I definitely wanted to ask you. There's a couple of things, you know. I think that number one is like, well, how about your journey into Islam? You know, like. Yeah. I don't think it's many people one. know here, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. my brother over here is, <laughs> stop this, stop is this. Alhamdulillah, he's a revert, um, and he's been a pretty devout Christian most of his life, right? So no, no, I wouldn't. Not, even say. I wouldn't say devout, but like you were like grew up from a Christian. Yeah, family. you grew up from a big Christian family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and this was like going to church. This was a yeah, bunch of stuff. Yeah. But then, you know things happen in life i'll let you get into it yeah. but so like go into i guess in detail yeah, the like the beginning of when something clicked for you to explore other religions hmm. now this is a, a loaded a loaded question but I, I love this question i would i always have to take it like way 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 back because ever since i was a kid i've always been god conscious like i've always I always felt as though it wasn't just me. And as a kid, I was maybe like six, seven. And I always thought this was just like my own little secret. It's like, oh, I have a little advantage. It's like, it's not just me. I would walk into a classroom and if, if God, I didn't know God at the time, would just navigate me and say, oh, say this or do this. Oh, don't do this. And I would say one of the most, for me, the most profound examples was a kid was bugging me. He was bothering me at recess. And I remember he pushed me or something. Um, and I was going to walk away. And then he said something. And then I turned around and I hit him. And the moment I hit him, like, a voice so loudly said, Cornell, you don't do that. You don't do that. You only hit if it's 
in defense. You, you never use violence. You never mm-hmm. resort to violence. And I remember I immediately cried because it didn't sound like it was me talking to myself. It was like, it was like you felt some. I felt something. I felt mm-hmm. something. Um, so fast forward in my life, I just kind of kept it to myself. I didn't really say anything. I didn't do anything. I just kept it as my little secret. Um, but then, of course, as you get older, I started realizing and started attributing that presence to God. Um, and everyone in my family, they're all Christian. Yeah. Um, so I would explore and I would ask certain questions. And I remember I asked, I would ask one person in my family. Um, did did a quick question in between? Did that ever? Like, growing up learning about Christianity, were you ever, like, confused? Like, because for... Yeah, because I try, like, you know, you can't just be a... Like, you can't just know about one religion. You should know about multiple, right? Yeah, yeah. So when I was, like, doing my research into, like, Christianity, one thing I just... I feel like it's... uh, I just did not understand is the Trinity. I, I, It's like... Oh, oh, let me speak on that. Okay, yeah. Let me speak on that. So, that, that does contribute to my confusion growing up because I would ask someone in my family who's Jesus oh that's God's son and as a kid I'm like oh cool that makes sense like Jesus I always hear the name Jesus cool 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 yeah yeah God's son makes sense I would ask someone else and they would tell me about the trinity and I was like okay that's that's not what the other person said but okay maybe that's just more refined okay I'll just keep it in my back pocket then I heard someone else say something about like a prophet and at that point I heard three conflicting stories about something that seems so like fundamental yeah right because all you hear is Jesus 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 growing up so I'm like okay let me let me push religion <coughs> to the side and let me just focus on my little secret and so fast forward maybe a couple years um we grew up um I'm together and we have never had a conversation about religion until maybe our second year of university yeah and this is where this kid becomes very integral because for the first time I, I eavesdropped him talking about Islam to another friend. And he didn't know I was listening. I was just being like a little rat. And just like, when, uh, when was this? This was second year. Second Damn. year university. And the reason why this struck me so hard is because growing up, this, believe it or not, like this guy was, I perceived him as like the clown, like the class clown. He would say the most outrageous things. Things have changed. But things have changed. Like you, it's hard to believe, um, because he's so pious and calm now. But yeah, so when I heard him speaking on Islam, I was like, yo, I have never heard this guy talk like this in my life. Like you just sounded completely different. He was serious. He was, and I was like, he's so passionate about this. And I was waiting for like the clown tendencies to come out, but it didn't. So I, I'm like, okay, that's interesting. That conversation had happened one more time. And at that point, um, we finally just, I, Allah just guided us to have a conversation about religion. And you asked me, so what do you even, what do you even practice? Like, what religion are you? And I remember my go-to answer is, eh, like, I grew up Christian, but like, I don't, yeah. I don't really, I don't really practice it too mm-hmm. much. I'm, I'm more spiritual. Like, I have my own deep connection. And he accepted that. And then maybe a month later, we had another conversation. And then when I said it this time, he, he, he pushed back. And he said, like, well, why, are you, why are you, like, how come you're not, like, more devout about it? Mm-hmm. And that's when I explained um, growing up how I... Do you remember what I meant when I said uh, more devout about it? Like, yeah, like, why, why aren't you saying, I'm Christian, I'm Christian? Oh, like, yeah. okay, more proud of it. Like, yes, like, yeah. more proud. Like, more accepting can, it. Because you, I think you noticed that I was a little <clears throat> confused. Because I would never, I would just... You can't really accept the answer of, it's, oh, it's my own personal uh, yeah, relationship. Yeah. Because religion is the gateway into developing a relationship with God. With God blah, yeah. blah. Um, so that's when you explain the concept of the train. And I, oh my gosh, man. I will never, ever, ever forget this conversation. Because this is what probably planted the most impactful seed in my head. And what you told me is that The reason why you feel so confused with Christianity and why you heard conflicting stories from your family is because think of religion like a train, Mm -hmm. right? Started with Adam. The train is going. The train is life, so the train continues. What happens is Allah will choose or God will choose a prophet to deliver his message directly from the source to everyone on the train, right? And it will continue. And right now everyone on the train is like, oh yeah, that's... 
I believe it. It came directly from the source. There's no need for me to, to doubt it. But the train's going to continue. But you explained the concept of prophets and how prophets are just humans. Yeah. Which means a prophet is eventually going to pass away. But human nature, when the prophet passes away, maybe for the first decade or so, it'll continue to be exactly what the source of the message was. But eventually, some people will start sprinkling in their own opinion. It's like, oh, that part was too harsh. Or let me add this because it works for me. Uh, let me... Let, uh, I don't know, like, let's tweak this a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But Allah sees it all. But life is continuing. So what he does is he sends another prophet, rejuvenate the message. It's coming directly from the source. So let the, the train will continue and continue. So, of course, it started with Judaism. That was one of the major religions. Then it went to Christianity. Yeah. But I think what you explained to me is the... I guess the issue with Christianity is that when Jesus was performing his miracles. They were so profound and so like in your face to the point where when Jesus eventually, we don't believe he passed. Yeah. But when he was sent up, people fell in love with the miracles so much to the point where, I don't know, man. I, he, I don't think he's just a person. Like He, he must be like God's son. Yeah. Right? Because I like, can't do that. That's one thing about um, the prophets, which I was reading into. Um, say, like, for example, in Islam, we believe... There's only like 40 prophets um, mentioned in the Quran or so. Um, but in all of time, there was over, I, I believe it was 99,000 prophets that was yeah. sent to the yeah. people. Yeah. So imagine how many generations that Allah tried to guide, mm. yet all these prophets were dying or mm. being killed mm. by people. Mm. And some of these some of these prophets i believe that and this is just my personal thoughts um i do remember a scholar talking about it but some of these prophets once they passed away they performed so many miracles during that time because there's no there's no uh internet there's no way to like showcase any of this Mm -hmm. stuff there's Mm -hmm. no way to like prove things it's word of mouth when those prophets perform those miracles people would just force that image of God upon them, even though mm. every single prophet's primary message was there is no God but Allah, mm. and I I am submitting to Him mm. alone. I am alone. not, and That's every every single prophet has said, I am not God. Yeah, I am not God. Every single one. Even every single even one. Isa, alayhi salam, Jesus said he is not a prophet multiple mm-hmm. times. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I, yeah. And it go, but it goes back to the train. All of this, oh, it must be God, must be God, is always when the prophet passes. It, actually, no, sorry. Some people would, I don't know, so where, are you saying that people would also say that? It starts off, okay, so. Is it always this, when they pass? Yeah, so this whole concept comes from Shaitan, okay? So the concept is, there's a prophet, he performs miracles. And he, his message outwardly says, I am not God. So everyone during his time when he's alive believes that he's not God, okay? Because he said it. But where the problem comes is after the prophet passes, Shaitan starts to start working. And he comes to the people saying that, remember that mm-hmm. prophet? He was so helpful. Mm-hmm. Maybe you should just remember him. So when you pray, just put something there mm. that so you can remember mm. the prophet that helped you so much. So people start putting maybe a stone. Mm. Then that stone grows into a statue. Mm. Then that statue turns into worship. Mm-hmm. Then those people of the time They're being pass told. away. They yes. pass away. Yes. So everyone that comes after them, all they know is there's a statue here mm-hmm. and my uh, ancestors yep. prayed my to the statue. Yep. My forefathers prayed mm-hmm. to the statue. What happens? You are committing shirk now. You didn't know about the history. Mm-hmm. What's shirk? Shirk mean, I you know what? Just shirk means that you're worshiping, us another, aside from Allah. Mm-hmm. It's one of the gravest sins, and it's the only sin that Allah has precautioned us about that He will not forgive. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. because it's discrediting God or Allah. And you're instead focusing on worshiping something else. Exactly. That doesn't deserve to be worshipped. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So that concept, so that concept of people, you like Shaitan tricking people with memories and love to worship, mm. was one of the easiest ways for people to get misguided back yeah. in the days. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's so true, man. Yeah. So that's literally that's the train. 
So when the prophet passes, that's when everything gets muddled and everyone's opinion of the truth is changed, right? It's not fact anymore, it's opinion. Um, and if something resonates with someone, they'll, be, they'll follow that person instead. Um, and I, wanna, I don't want to go too much into it because I'm still learning about it, but Paul, um, the apostle, he had a big part in, in changing what the, the root of Christianity was supposed to be, but I'll, I'll get into that later. Um, but then when he told me the prophet that came after Jesus, which is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and we should say peace be upon him to all prophets, uh, by the way, but when you told me about Islam and how the final religion came and the story of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and how the Quran came and how the Quran is actually the miracle. The miracle, yep. And, the, and part of that miracle is the fact that it can be preserved. And how someone in Peru, you said, and a four-year-old in Peru and a seven-year-old in China and a 30-year-old in, in, in Sri Lanka, they'll all be able to recite the exact same words, the exact same text. It's easy to memorize. It's it's the ex- perfectly constructed. The example that was given was um, there was a scholar that said if you were to burn and destroy every piece of literature in this world today, mm-hmm. meaning all books are empty, all websites, all words are gone mm-hmm. from the human mind, mm-hmm. the only book that's coming back tomorrow is the Quran because Allah has said. He has preserved it within the hearts of people. Yeah. People have memorized it all across the world. Oh, yeah. Kids, there's, man. There's no way of getting rid of that book, you know? Mm. And the miracle here is tell me one book, not even one book, one page that over a thousand people have memorized worldwide where yeah. they could recreate that one page yeah. word for word. Just one page. This, I'm talking about 602. 604 pages mm-hmm. of memorization. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. Think bro. about it. That's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's crazy. So, yeah, so after he told me that whole story, um, if I'm being honest, I immediately knew it as the truth because I think what I've always been searching for is like that, something where I can get like direct, no opinion, no, no human influence, just direct source of truth. And that's, that was... That did it for me because you can't replicate that. You can't fake that. You can't have everyone around the world be able to memorize the same text. Like yeah, yeah. A human can. And I do, I do remember one, one part. Uh, this was Ramadan in uh, university when we sat in a parking lot and we were just going through some. We were kids, so we were just going through some um, factual stuff in the Quran. You know, like oh, what yeah. is, what is some predictable facts that the Quran has brought out. And do you remember how many of those facts were mind blowing? It's like you could, yeah. It's like you could you could close your eyes or, like you know, give it a cold shoulder. But in Islam, there's a beauty of this miraculous book. When you open your heart to wanting to learn, that book teaches you so much. But when you look at it and begin that journey with a feeling of, it's. I'm just reading it for the sake of reading it. There's nothing there. Then you're going to get what you give. Yeah, yeah. You know? Because you told me you have to be invited. That's another thing that I'll never forget. You actually have to be invited. Part of the, the qualities of being invited to deserve that invitation is you need to have to open heart. Exactly. So yeah. it's not just being invited to the religion. You have to be invited to go to the masjid. Mm-hmm. You have to be invited to go to hajj. You have to be invited to even meet with people of Allah like the ones that Allah holds near to him you know so it's like that invitation we think that we can choose yeah. oh I want to wake up one day and today is the day I want to go to the masjid yeah. you think life it works like that no, man. Allah invites you to the masjid if he sees that something in your heart the intentions is stirring in the right way but you don't get invited to the masjid just because you want to go yeah. you know you yeah. know how much blessings and how many blessings there are in the masjid Every step you take in a masjid, every person you smile at in a masjid, every penny you give for donation, mm. everything counts, mm. you know? Mm. So it's just like, these are invitations, but we take it for granted. Mm. We, we prolong that walk to the masjid because we sell ourselves. 
that house is never leaving. Mm. I could go tomorrow. Mm. I could go tomorrow. Mm. You know? Mm. But that tomorrow, you know, every promise. day your heart is just, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. it's not gonna go. It's fleeting, man. Everything in life is fleeting, including our lives. So you gotta seize the moment as much as you can. Yeah. But from the outside looking in, I can safely say that this religion is so so like practical and tangible. Because every step that I took and of course, like I, if I'm being completely honest, it was daunting knowing all the things that I had to do eventually um, or that was recommended and required for me to do. Looking from the outside, it was like, oh, that's so much. So my question to you is, like, what precise... I understand the childhood, you know, but what precise moment do you recall that really got the the ball rolling? Like, for you to be like... Okay, I gotta start doing my research. Like, okay, I gotta t- oh, start taking this oh, more yeah. seriously. I know, I know. Car accident. Car accident. Yeah, car accident. Dang. Yeah, this was. So walk us. Uh, let me hear it. <laughs> I, I I remember this story, but like I need to. This was a while back, you know. You were a big part of it. How many years ago was this? This was like ten. No, not ten years ago. Maybe maybe eight. Eight seven, years ago, yeah. Eight seven. Tw- twenty uh twenty sixteen. I remember. Twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. Yeah, man. It was, I would say it's probably the lowest point of my life. Easily. Because... Nah, you can't say that. One of, one of, so far, so far. It felt like the lowest moment, it felt, but yeah, so yeah, come yeah, on. It, it, felt, it felt like the lowest point of my life. Um, because I, I remember I was not where I wanted to be career-wise. Um, that day I was sick. Um, my mom told me not to go to work, and I was like, no, I have to, I have to, I have to. I need to get full time I need to get full time I just spent so much money at U of T at university and I only have like a contract in the government I, I should be doing more so I went to work when I was sick got in a car accident right at the intersection of my work because of that it was my family car that I had destroyed got totaled it was gone um, because I couldn't go to work because I had a headache and I was dealing with the, the aftermath of it lost my job so now I was unemployed I didn't have a job and all these worldly things were just hitting me. And I remember being so distraught. But then you noticed that I was kind of disconnected. Um, and you called me and you said, and I told you the story of what happened. And the thing you told me is, maybe that happened for a reason. And for the first time after that conversation, it made me think that maybe bad situations are, are a blessing in disguise. Like, I never even looked at that situation. How can you look at a car accident Dude, as a blessing? Whenever I think about that story of yours, I, I always think to myself that that was the only possible scenario at the only possible time that Allah could have inflicted that hardship, yeah. which was disguised as a blessing upon you, for you to come to the religion. Why do you say that? Because there, like, there could have been nothing, no other calamity that he could have tested you with. He yeah. knew that that was the was one. Tailor made for me. That was tailor made for you. Yeah. Because of your emotions, because of your situation, because of your thoughts. It, like, for example, you breaking an arm, that wouldn't yeah, have done it. Yeah, yeah. You going through something different like that wouldn't have done it. Someone yeah. passing away, who knows? That might have not done it. Yeah. yeah. That one was specifically was made for you. He knew. He knew. How, you know, he, I knew me. he knew. He knew. He knew. He knew. You know? and, and thank God that happened, honestly, because without it, I wouldn't be where I am today. Today, I attribute that moment as being one of the, the most powerful and most beautiful and beneficial moments in my entire life. Yeah. Like, by far. Yeah. By far. That's what I always keep very close to me, man. Like, when Allah truly loves a type of person, He will start inflicting them with hardships mm-hmm. just to one bring them closer mm. to to expiate their sins in this world mm. and number three um he call, hear their hear their voice mm. Mm. you know yes yes just just to like hey you've been you've mm. been here you haven't been calling out on me it's time let me let me just give you a little prayer yeah, here yeah and it's funny because all those three things happened to me i started doing more research and, and being more open to the idea of learning about Islam and taking it seriously. Yeah. And the only only way I was able to, like, give you that type of advice because I kind of, you know, yeah, you, just... You, uh, and, like, honestly, our lives have always been so parallel because he would learn a lesson that I would need. So he'd, we'd both be going. Like, this, is, this honestly has been our life from the beginning. He'd be going, he'd be going. He'd learn a lesson. I'd fall back because I haven't learned that lesson. And then I would catch up. 
and then maybe I'd go ahead and then I'd teach him a lesson and he'd catch up. Yeah, it's like, been so, it, it's been so, such a blessing. and honestly, that's something that we're, we're both, alhamdulillah, grateful for. It's yeah, like, man. our lives are so different. We don't talk to each other for like, there's times we don't talk to each other for a couple of weeks, couple of months, but every time we reconnect, there's something that we gain from each other. Yeah. yeah. And I'm telling you, that's the, the common foundation of Allah and having love for Allah that brings us closer. Mm. That one thing that I'll never forget, I'm not doing the Illuminati sign, <laughs> but the triangle, you know, yeah. Allah is at the top. Yeah. And then you could replace the bottom two angles with like friends, mm. friendships, or mm. like husband and wife, you mm. know. And you'll notice that the closer you get to the top, mm -hmm. the which is Allah, mm -hmm. the closer you'll get to one another. Yeah, yeah. We've just, we've started getting so close with the concept of Allah, talking about it, learning about it. Like, there's no other conversation in this world you can have with anyone else that'll that bring you closer. You closer together, 100%. No. Literally, Literally, you just go up. Maybe we'll have, like, a little triangle somewhere. Just yeah. Insert here. Um, but yeah, no, so that situation definitely woke me up. And something I always say is that it's often darkness that makes you appreciate the light. Mm, and that was yeah. one of the darkest moments of my life. But without feeling that darkness and seeing that darkness, I wouldn't have seen that glimmer of light. Yeah. Right? That came through you in your conversation. So if you're ever going through anything, reflect. Just take your time to just reflect because this could be God, Allah, giving you the most beautiful invitation yeah. to get closer to Him. 100%. I remember, I remember that um, journey of yours. It was a hectic one. Yeah, man. But the best journey I've ever been through, ever, ever. So, you know, like, see, people go through hardships, and the first thought in their head is, oh, why, I, me? why me? I just want this to stop. I just yeah. want it to end. I want life to go back. Yeah. Only if we could, and this is difficult for us too. You know, when we go through hardships, but what we got to start doing is thinking like, how many hardships have I gone through in the past? And what was the outcome of that hardship? Yes, yes. And where am I now? Because yes. if I'm still sitting here right now yeah. and I feel content, this is the best version of me who mm -hmm. got through everything. Yeah. Meaning, yeah. this is yet another hardship to, to improve mm -hmm. me, to, to help yes. me grow. Yes. We don't think like that, man. No, it's man. hard because when you're in this situation, you always tell me this. When you're in your own situation, it's hard to see outside. Yeah. But when you're outside of the situation, it's, it's easy so to see inside. Yeah, you know, which goes back to why it's so important to surround yourself with people yeah. that actually care about Key. you, Key. Can give you advice from the source, right? Because it Key. is easy. When That's I see your situations, it's easy. When you see mine, it's easy. easy. Yeah, exactly. It's it's um uh, it's a sunnah. Our Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him um, mentioned that um, a man when he's he's married or he's um, in in a relationship in a marriage with children xyz it's always beneficial for a man to always go outside and seek his brothers mm. to have conversations about mm. dean mm. because a man's nature if he's sitting at home just doing whatever he won't be able to retain information to teach his his wife mm. and also how men are created is they kind of want to go through their own struggles by themselves mm. but what we learned is when you're always alone and you're independent, mm. whispers. whispers of shaitan is at an all-time yeah. high. Yeah. All-time high. The best thing that you can do during those times is literally go seek out for advice from your brothers yeah. because they're looking <laughs> from the outside. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, 100%, man. 100%. Yeah, that's so true. And that also goes back to if you're not growing, then you're digressing. So if you're not going outside and gaining other perspectives and advice and all that stuff, then the only direction you can really go in is backwards. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because the devil, Shaitani, does not leave. No, he, the, the, you know what I heard, right? And I'm sure most, many people heard this. Every single human being has a black um, dot in their heart. So even our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he, when he was a kid, he was like five years old playing in the playground. Um, the angel Jibreel alayhi salam came and literally opened up his heart. It's an open heart surgery, okay? And how, whatever, you can only imagine. Took out his heart and he took out the black spot out of his heart mm. and he put his heart back in mm. and he, he came back to life. That was the only reminiscence of Shaitan inside our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And 
Allah and Jibreel salam didn't allow it to grow. So for us, it said that when you're a baby and you're just born, babies come out crying. They come out crying because shaitan pricks at them mm-hmm. saying, welcome to this world, I'm going to be with you for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Meaning, I'm going to be talking to you, I'm going to be distracting you, I'm going to be confusing you, I'm going to be increasing you in doubt. Everything Jealousy, I can do, envy, everything I can do that gets you away from the straight path. Because shaitan also claimed to um, claim to say to Allah that I'm going to go right after your your um, devout believers. Mm. I'm not going to go out for them, the ones that are partying. I'm not going to go to the yeah. ones that are killing, the ones that are doing yeah. this or yeah. that. So I'm going to go on the, straight path. on the straight path. Those are the ones I'm going to go out to yeah. because those are the ones that matter. You know, when you're trying, and this, I want to ask you this. Remember when you were like very close to like reverting and you were ready and I was calling you every day I was like hey hey let's go let's go you're ready but you kept saying no 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 I'm not ready yeah, yeah. and I told yeah. you I told you the moment you get close on his straight path yes. he starts driving away yes so tell yes. me tell me and we'll end it off here yeah, because we'll go deeper into it but tell me what your thoughts were in actually taking that leap why did it take so long for that exact reason yeah because I'm sure so many people in my comments for example say I've been researching about a, a lot about Islam I've been watching a lot of your videos um, I'm going to research a bit more yeah. and that's what gets me sometimes I'm like what more will you yes. research like what more can you find out about God like Allah you yeah. know yeah. you'll never be 100% true yeah. Yeah. that 99% is is facts and stuff like yeah. that yeah. but that 1% will it's always have to be faith, faith. Yes. yeah yes. um it was the whispers. It was, it came in different forms. One, it came in the form of, uh, I need to learn a little bit more. I'm not ready yet. Let me just be, let me try to get to that 100%. Yeah. That was part of it. Another part of it is the whispers of, I don't know, your whole family's Christian. Uh, what are they going to think? Right? So that despite me knowing it as the truth, that part still weighed mm. on me. Um, yeah, no, I think it was those two. Those are the two major ones. Those are the those are the major ones that typically stick around, yeah, you know? Yeah, But what, I think after you told me about the fact that these doubts and these reservations are going to happen when you already know it as the truth, because Shaitan and the devil is going to be like, oh, he's close, let me, no, 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 I don't want another one to, to know the truth. Yeah. Another one to get closer to, to, to God, because his whole purpose is he's trying to stray as many people yeah. away as possible. Yeah. So when you told me that, it it made me realize that I already know it as the truth. I just need to leave. There's not another fact I'm going to learn. There's not another... I'm not going to read something and, and, and feel it again. It doesn't matter how much of that I get. I'll still know it as the truth. Yeah. So why not right now? The biggest the biggest fear of shaitan, you know what that is? Us getting close to Allah? What? It's knowledge. Oh, yeah. The more a Muslim learns about Allah Mm -hmm. his heart will naturally open up Mm -hmm. which will allow him to understand shaitan understand his mindset understand his goal understand his attacks understand his direction understand where he comes when he comes what he does you know shaitan is something that is that knows you so well because there's two appointed to you Mm -hmm. spends their entire day with you understands your nafs meaning your desires understands your battles your your uh, trauma, your yeah. stresses, your anxiety, everything yeah. understands it. Yeah, and but very all, well. But all it can do is whisper to you. Mm. Remember that word whisper. It speaks volumes because if something is whispering to you, then you know Allah has already given us the ability to talk over to it, rise to it. rise above it. Because who whispers? When do you whisper? When you're secretly doing mm. something. Mm. When you're when hiding. You're when you're not confident. So shaitan is whispering stuff to us but he's not saying stuff to mm. us you know he's not making us do he's anything. not making he's us do no anything exactly us. so we have to keep in mind that it doesn't matter how loud the whispers may feel you have to strengthen yourself because your voice inside of yourself when you're on the straight path mm-hmm. the whispers mean nothing to it and what's the only way to strengthen that ill knowledge let's go come on let's go so i'll just close by by saying that we're going to dive into this next episode for sure um 
But the one thing I'll say is that this religion, for me, having the unique perspective of being on the outside in, is so tangible and so practical. There's every single aspect mm -hmm. of it is beautifully designed to actually bring you real peace and real contentment because this world is this world is a challenge. Yes, yeah. there's, there's a lot of things that we're dealing yeah. with. Yeah, and a we, lot of things. And in the future, like we want to start going over a lot of like these are honestly. Aside from this podcast, these are conversations we literally have on the phone. Like, yeah. and we've been thinking about that for so, so many years now. Like, hey, conversations like this that we have, we're grateful to have it because not is everyone blessed with people that are like minded that yeah. talk about Islam, that have passion, you know, about Islam. Mm -hmm. So, like, these conversations, we know, like, whether or not there's a mic in front of us, cameras, these are conversations we've had our whole lives. Like, for years and years of course we gain knowledge and we gain structure but these conversations this is us this is what we talk about yeah. and this i'm telling you if you're trying to make friends and lifelong friends the only way you're going to be able to do that is with people that have love for something that as much as you have love for mm -hmm. and our love for our creator is alhamdulillah it's there and we want to strengthen it and we want to increase it we want to learn about it we want to understand it yeah. and we want to show people uh, like more about it help them learn about it yeah. you know yeah. so well said man yeah so there goes number one huh number one so right. I appreciate you guys assalamu alaikum Allah office. <laughs>